Okay, we're going to go after things in a little bit different fashion today. I'm going to show you um, what you've already seen in several of my other videos, my EDC. We're also going to show you my war belt setup and how that works directly with my EDC. So the idea is I'm going to show you all this, give you a quick rundown on it, and then I will open all of that up, show you what is in it, and describe how it uh, works with my other stuff. So, stand by. Okay, so here we go. We've got one of my very favorite movies of all time playing right there. That'd be The Edge with Anthony Hopkins. Okay, so we're going to do the EDC real quick. This is what's on my body at all times during the day with the exception of my pistol and my reload here because I work in two non-permissive environments. Those are secured elsewhere. So here we go. You guys that have seen some of my other videos know that this is my ankle kit, which has the SWAT T, some gloves, shears, a uh, cat tourniquet by Recon. It is not a North American rescue. Then in here, we've got um, some um, compressed gauze and some sea locks, which is a hemostatic, the hemostatic agent, which, by the way, it's amazing. It'll actually stop a femoral artery bleed on a hog at right around 30 seconds. So amazing, amazing stuff. And it doesn't create heat like a uh, quick clot does. So there's no danger to of tissue damage to your casualty nor to the rescuer. Next, another fantastic product, which you can plainly see has been used all the heck here. This is the um, uh, Blade Tech EDC belt, which I use for my weapons because it is incredibly stout. It's got a core of some really hard plastic in it. Um, and even I've got a substantial grip. I can't fold that. I mean, there's, it's not going anywhere, dude. Teeth on the inside of that as they ratchet down are in quarter inch increments and uh, they'll hold up to 350 pounds. So you could, if you really felt like it, repel on this particular belt. Not that I recommend it <laughs> anyway. Next item is Palm Personal Self-Defense Spray, and this I can have on campus. So it's just, it's a really nasty uh, handheld OC spray that disappears in medium-sized man hands. It's gone. Okay, as always, you guys know, I carry a Bic lighter wrapped in about five foot of duct tape at all times. Wallet, obviously. My good luck charm, my NRA coin, that is one troy ounce of silver. My normal EDC knife is not the grip tilling, which you've seen before. Spyderco Rubicon 2. Amazing weapon. Really is. The thickness on that blade, the balance of it, the, um, the jimping isn't overly aggressive, so it's very comfortable to use. Carbon fiber handle. Yeah, it was worth every penny. I don't like to skimp on knives. Next is my Uzi tactical pen which actually has a glass breaker, DNA gatherer, and inside here there's also a handcuff key. My um, Claris XTC1, or sorry, XT1C, which is a rechargeable flashlight, little tiny thing. I mean, it's along the same order as my Palm Personal Defense Spray. Disappears in a man hand. And it puts out 1,000 lumens, has strobe function, and all the fun tactical stuff. It just doesn't have a striking bezel. Although I can tell you right now, put that thing on strobe. It has variable strobe speed, so the eye cannot adjust to it. It'll make you sick. You'll, you'll seriously throw up. <laughs> so, over here, we have the reload for my Smith & Wesson Shield Performance Center 45. And I carry that outside the waistband, no big deal. I don't need to get too sophisticated about it. It's loaded with uh, tactical uh, plus P uh, hollow points. What are these ones? The, oh, these are the HSTs. Yeah, they go in at, uh, at 230 grains. They come out at 230 grains, but they leave a one inch hole the way they do that, the way they expand. They keep everything with them so it's not quote unquote exploding ammo that somebody could really mess with you over in court. Okay, next. 
This was a hand-me-down from my brother, so don't expect most people will buy it. It's a $400 watch. That is the Santo Spartan uh, Barrow. So it has the barometer, uh, has a compass, uh, storm alerts. I mean, it has more features than I can possibly use. Possibly, ever, never. <laughs> but it's an excellent watch. The compass is accurate and, of course, rechargeable with a heart rate monitor. All that jazz. I had a replacement band put on it. Actually, I put it on because it's really easy, but that was, uh, I, the only complaint I ever had about that watch is that their silicone, uh, watch band was too soft. So with daily use, it eventually caved in and it only took it about a year and a half. So I've replaced it with something a little more hardy. Next Smith and Wesson, uh, shield performance center ported, uh, running 45 ACP. And that's in an Alien Gear Cloak Tuck 3.0. Uh, that is probably the most comfortable holster you will ever see. Uh, the backing on it is a neoprene type thing. And you can tell, obviously, I wear it a lot. There's also a plate of spring steel in here that adds retention level to your weapon. So that if your belt happens to be a little bit loose that day or whatever, you're still not going to lose it. I mean, it's not going anywhere right it takes actual effort to remove that from the holster so designed to function with my war belt setup which is a bare minimum setup that i carry with me in the back of my car at all times and i tend to be one of those people who don't uh, i don't ever buy anything with one purpose in mind so stand by just a minute and we will get to the war belt setup and i'll explain how it works Okay, and here we go with the war belt. Um, just because something is small doesn't mean it can't be exceedingly useful. So we are going to start over here on this side. And I'm going to tell you right now, I do things in layers for a reason. So that you always have some options. <clears throat> uh, I am big on fire. I'm big on water. Those are the two items that I consider to be the biggest priority. And you don't have to spend a mint on these things in order for them to work well. So um, I had a, I bought my son a monkey packs, a uh, big monkey pack for a school book bag slash go bag if we had to. And so in the end, when that pack died, I took this off of it. This is, you know, it's just like a waist belt pack is essentially what it is. So that came with something else that's been repurposed. This was also on that pack. It's just what I use for a little replenishment pouch. Uh, your standard issue GI, well, it's not GI, but uh, your um, canteen pouch with snaps on it. That was another thing that went with um, something else. I've, I've repurposed it as well. And then over here, um, we have another Blade Tech product, my Blade Tech um, thigh rig, which fits something uh, somewhat more substantial than the uh, Smith & Wesson. And then we got Marsheath here for the Gerber strong arm. Now look guys, I know, Gerber, Fiskars, everybody's got their biases. But I watched a gentleman on a video pound this thing into an oak beam about this far. Actually, it might have been about like that, about a half inch. And then he proceeded to stand his 180 pound self on top of it. It did not snap. It did not bend. So tough is what we're after. And that thing is razor sharp. I took care of that. But all of these items are hung from a Condor H harness, which I run slick on the back. That's the back of the harness so that it can be worn underneath something else with a Condor battle belt strung with a UTG uh, combat belt inside of it. So this whole setup right here with all of these pouches and everything, uh, and let's go ahead and we'll include the knife. That's under a hundred bucks right there. So massive multi-use for under a hundred bucks. The, um, the Blade Tech uh, thigh rig, we'll go ahead and we'll say that that adds substantially to it, but it's still not super expensive. Um, I think I paid 60 bucks for it, something along those lines, but for a good, uh, holster that does its job very well and has been tested under combat circumstances repeatedly, 
Yeah, I'll take it. I'll pay 60 bucks for it. Okay, so here we go. Here's what's in the battle belt or the war belt, whatever you want to call it. War belt, knife hand. That's for you, bear. <laughs> All right, so here we go. In that little sustainment pouch, we have two zip fizz, which is an inexpensive thing you can buy at Costco. It's a B12 energy drink with a little bit of caffeine in it and electrolytes to keep you up and running. Next, we have just a standard issue, um, you know, cheapo Allen lens out of compass for good basic headings and good basic navigation. This right here, guys, is the king of kings, I swear. Nate at Canadian Prepper, yeah, this was a great idea. I went out and I found my own brand that I liked. This is toilet paper. These are toilet paper tablets. Each one of these individual tablets, you take and you drip a little bit of water on it, maybe, I don't know, it'd take less than an ounce, and it inflates into not just a piece of toilet paper, but a cloth wet wipe that is roughly the size of a piece of notebook paper. And if you're on the regular, that is more than enough to take care of business. If you're using it for another application other than wiping your butt, you could clean dishes with that thing four, five, six times. It's massively reusable. You could even soak it in some soap. You could do all kinds of nice things with that. But those right there are the king of kings, dude. Ultimate comfort, ultimate multi-use, which I am huge on multi-use. Next, a little bit of ahi, good protein, a little bit of fat. So you got some energy. Uh, of course, if it matters to you, these are safe catch ahi, yellowfin tuna steaks, basically, you know, tested for mercury and all that jazz if it really bothers you. Um, I myself really won't be stopping to count whether it's safe catch if I have to eat it, but you can just tear the top off of it and push up on the edge of the pouch and feed it to yourself, just like uh, in the old MREs, the uh, maple bars and things like that. You just push up from the bottom of the pouch and you can feed it to yourself. No Silverware necessary. So obviously in my canteen pouch, we have a Rothko one quart standard issue uh, canteen. We have a galvanized canteen cup. So if you are out of it, all your other options, you can boil water in that to make it pure. Huge multi-use item. Um, you can cook in it, you name it. I mean, geez, <laughs> it's a canteen cup, man. Yeah, buddy. Okay, so next in this little pouch, I keep a Marpat Woodland poncho to go over the top of everything and keep you dry. Okay, it's not the most stylish thing. It's not some cry precision horse shit that you paid 300 bucks for, <laughs> but no, it'll keep you dry and it's camouflage. So you sit down, you look like a lump on a rock if you're in the right circumstances, yada, 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 you know. So in this front pouch of this, I keep my old sunglasses case, which is a hard side case. And in that little zipper bag, I keep all of this stuff. So you will have in there one Sawyer Mini squeeze bag, the Sawyer Mini, a straw to use it for if you have to in the wrong circumstances. You will have a survival life um, fuel match. So when you unscrew this, there is a little, well, here, let's just see if I can do it one-handed for y'all. Oh, look at that. Victory. Okay, soaked in fuel. Little tab there. And you take it on this striker. There's a striker on the side of this little gig right there in that notch and you strike it and it's a fuel-based match to help you light fires obviously small light i mean this thing may weigh a quarter of an ounce total but yeah you strike it right through there on that little bar and you got fire next is a normal old kuglin's uh, match case with stormproof matches in it and two strikers you see over here so those you can actually dunk in water while they are lit Pull them back out and they will reignite on their own. Then you have your cleaning syringe for your Sawyer so that you can back flush it when you put it away. Keep things nice and clean. No Giardia. Set of shears. Always I keep those around. So those do not go in that little hard case. This is where we depart from the hard case. You'll have a 
Bic lighter wrapped in about seven foot of duct tape there. <laughs> this is because this one's a little bit bigger, doesn't have to fit in my pocket. We have another product here called Go Fire. So it's a tinder to help you dry out things in the worst circumstances. We have three two foot hanks of paracord. Just because if you need to uh, stake down a tent or you've lost a guy line or whatever, you can just grab those two foot hanks and not have to worry about it done. So in this main pouch here, we will carry at the base down low, and I know the angry prepper is going to hang me for this. Spam. Hey man, you need the salt, you need the fat, you need the meat. Okay. Whether you dig it or whether you don't find your own product to throw in there. Cool. So next got about 30 foot of speed braided paracord there. Athletic tape and second skin because I got bad ankles. I got to take care of those. This is a triangle bandage. So, and some safety pins you see back here. So you got a multi-use, you know, sling and tape kit there. We've got our little boo-boo kit with some extra toilet paper in it and extra matches. Alcohol wipes, Neosporin. This is for little wounds, man. Little stuff. Stuff that that isn't designed to take care of. This is the little everyday stuff, okay? So, and what I've done here is I took a food saver bag and I sucked it all down. So there's minimal air. It's got some dressings in there, some bigger dressings and stuff like that. Gloves, toilet paper. You know, stuff to take care of scrapes, burns, bumps, bruises, yada. And it's also got, if you can see this right here, it's got a uh, survival blanket in there. Folded up nice and neat and sucked down. So you've got a little bit of extra heat. You've got some boo-boo patching and some disinfecting, basically. On top of all that, where there's easy access, will be next a shemog, which I know has become kind of a trendy pile of crap, but you know what? I live in Montana. So extra insulation air uh, for your neck and your head is, yeah, always appreciated, trust me, especially when you're a bald guy like me. A beanie, always. Dude, those go right on top where I can get at them because if I have to jump out of a car and boogie, you know what, man? I'm going to want to, at my first opportunity, throw on some insulation layers, okay? So next, in this little end pouch, there will be a bandana. Always face coverage, pre-filtering, whatever you want. You can use it for a dressing. In Montana, of course, you saw me demonstrate these gloves with my bow. So these are a little more insulated. They have little grippy pads on the end and tell you what, those are awesome. And they were like 10 bucks at Costco. Next, another $10 product. So light gloves, especially for like when you're shooting or things like that and you need to be able to have some tactile feel or operate an electronic device. These are light neoprene head gloves, which are, I think they were about 10 bucks as well at Costco. So right on the top of that as well, is going to be just a few band-aids and some um, ibuprofen and stuff so that you don't got to go digging for the other stuff. And I'm also a huge blade guy. So here you go. This is a tops whistle on this uh, and it's a neck knife. This is the tops Sparrowhawk. And while you might not think it looks like much because it's small, look at this, dude. Cup it, hide it in your hand, it's gone. You just reach like you're pointing at someone. And... Or it's good for fine work. If you're skinning a squirrel, you don't want to break out the strong arm for the love of God. Good for skinning, taking care of fish, all of those small things. I keep that sucker razor sharp and stashed. So in a bad circumstance, I jump out. That goes around my neck and uh, the harness goes on my body and off we go. So there you go, guys multi-layer system to operate together. That's what you want to do. If you have any questions or any other further suggestions, let me know. Thanks. Bye.